Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. Today's video I'm going to be talking about one ounce coins going for under spot. Yeah, good times for buyers, bad times for people like me. <laughs> that certainly isn't a problem though. You know, I'm I'm experienced enough not to worry about these things. Now, I wanted to kind of talk about the price mechanisms and why we're seeing this. So typically you've got a buyer, you've got a seller. And if it's peer-to-peer, -peer, the buyer meets the seller. And if it's not peer-to-peer, the buyer kind of meets a dealer or a market maker and they kind of bridge the gap. They assume the risk and they kind of take a small cut for doing it. There's not a lot of margin for most dealers. Now, there's going to be some dealers who make a killing, unscrupulous dealers who take the biscuit. Unfortunately, where there's money to be made, there's going to be people who take, take the piss. That's just a sad fact of life. But typically... What will happen, there's no fixed price in, in terms of what people will pay. So for me, I will pay my suppliers 98%. I'm not paying it at the moment. There's no point because if I buy for 98% and something goes for 99% a spot, you're talking, what, £15? There's, there's too much risk for me. I'm tying up too much money to make such a small amount of money. And you don't know if the price will go down. So if I get it in, I can't sell it and the price goes down over the course of the day. I'm actually working for free or I'm losing money and that's not a position that I want to be in. So when we get to times like this, I'm just like, hmm, I'm, I'm happy to sit this out and try and sell other types of coins. Now, I've preached for a long time that you should set your stack up to kind of reflect the different levels of risk. Now, typically, you would do this by having bullion, semi-numismatic, numismatic, and then you tally it off against other assets in your portfolio. When a market's like this, it's literally a, a falling knife. So going back to the example of there's no fixed price, if a dealer knows that the market's at 99% or it's at spot or spot plus one, the dealer then goes back to the seller and says, well, actually, there's, there's not a lot of profit in this anyway. So I need to pay you, say, 94%, 95%. That's just where the market is. Now, the individual can decline. They can turn around and say, well, no, I want more out of it, or oh, you're ripping me off, blah, blah, blah. But the, the reality is, if they were to sell it themselves, they'd soon realise that it's not where it used to be. I used to sell bits for spot plus 3%. Those days, are they're not here at the moment. Now, all this points to the fact that it's a buyer's market. It's been a buyer's market for a while since I've been back off ill. I, I felt like it was getting tougher anyway since the start of the year. Um, there was a few months that shocked me. There's a few months I did okay. Um, but it felt like more and more things were getting listed. And there's more dealers now. So... Before when I started, there was maybe four dealers. And they weren't professional dealers. They were kind of DIY dealers. They, they were people doing it for a side income. They, they weren't doing it because this was their profession. They I wouldn't say they were experts in coins. They weren't numismatists or bullion dealers. They were people who got bits in and just moved it on. Maybe they imported it, slapped a pound on a coin, or maybe someone... they'd create a reputation for themselves and they were the go-to guy to sell coin to but they weren't your brick and mortars or your limited companies these days the people i'm competing against those people are gone there's not many of them left they either they quit because work was more profitable it's worth more of their time this is a, a hard business or they went into other businesses you know they kind of diversified away from coins because the margin was easier i've seen so many grand opening and grand closings that when someone comes to me for advice sometimes i just say just just stack it you know use it as a vehicle to hoard wealth because trading is is very difficult and it's even more difficult now you're competing with the professional dealers the numismatists the the brick and mortar dealers because when it is a race to the bottom that is absolutely great for buyers it's not good for someone like me or it's not good for sellers so if you're a seller you've got no reputation on social media 
the truth is you're going to a dealer because you won't be able to sell it you, you just won't so it's a lot easier just to go to someone they will pay you a bit less they make their cut their commission whatever and they will move it on for you so where do you go where if you've got lots of pockets or you've got deep pockets you know fill your boots because these markets tend to bounce back in the years and years i've been doing this it's always flipped from buyer's market to seller's market and seller's market back to buyer's market and you've got to understand the, the traits and the signs of what is going on because you can really pick up some some bargains now in terms of those one ounce coins that same dealer i won't name drop him i don't really name drop other dealers on here but he put out some 2020 proof sovereigns 410 pound i think it was for proof sovereign that's a crazy ridiculous price i think he had 15 of them 20 of them i i can't quite remember but he had a fair amount of them great for the buyer you know as a professional dealer i probably could have bought them and sold them down the road i probably could have sold them on the channel slapped for 440 on them 450 on them but i'm looking at the market and thinking i don't have a magic money tree <laughs> i can't shake it and money comes out i've got to buy it and sell it so i recently bought this for example so this is a pf69 2005 i've got this up at 750 it didn't sell or it hasn't sold yet I don't particularly want to give it away but there's only so many coins that i can kind of absorb and say i've got the money to hold because the value is there but when the market forces are going down and we're looking at they're going to be there's going to be more stress in the system firstly we're on some holidays secondly we've got the cost of living crisis there's there's just not a lot of money around so how long can i hold these coins that's the question you need, you need to ask yourself or that's the question I ask myself now going on to why the one ounce coins were so cheap I've been banging the drum for a long time so anyone who understands inflation understands that inflation is actually a built-in byproduct of what the government does it's a hidden tax essentially they get to print money well traditionally they, they got to print money to keep the standard of living up and they aimed for 2% inflation. That was the core target. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. We've had, what, five rounds of QE. Quantitative easing has absolutely obliterated um, that target. I can't see us being anywhere near that target anytime soon. So if you've got a system where um, the gold price so sorry if you've got a system where they consistently put money into the market and you subscribe to the theory that gold keeps up with the amount of money in the market it essentially creates a two-tier system so you're going to have small gold that's going to have higher premiums and you're going to have large gold that attracts lower premiums so moving forward if you get one ounce coins at two thousand pounds or three thousand pounds four thousand pounds and i think it will get there i don't think it's a matter of if it's a matter of when because they cannot fix this system they've already said that it's going to take 60 odd years to pay back qe and that was before the whole will live trust out last the lettuce <laughs> where they put more money into the system it just isn't it isn't feasible but the more money they put in the more these ounces are going to go up by by virtue of not being able to be corrupted in a sense you can't corrupt the money supply you have to mine it there's only a certain amount you can put onto the market so i think the premiums are going to go lower and i think the spread is going to change to bring it back to the start of the, comp the discussion i think the spread will get the the spread will stay the same sorry but the prices will change so for example you might get it for a prolonged period of time where one ounce gold coins around a position maybe around spot price or spot plus one time will tell i think it will get there personally i think there's so much gold from bygone eras that when it was bought it was really relatively speaking it was pretty cheap in terms of monetary terms and now if you the further up you go into the thousand pounds people just can't afford it they just can't so what's going to happen is 
the premium will drop and it will be a buyer's market on the one ounce gold coins. And for the smaller gold coins, such as your sovereigns and your, your quarter ounces, etc., the premiums are going to rise because there's going to be more people chasing those types of coins because they can't afford the one ounce coins. So you will have the inverse effect, or at least in theory, where the the spread will remain the same on, on both of the coins, but you might be seeing spot plus 20% on a quarter ounce and the dealer might pay spot plus 10% because there's less quarter ounces, there's more people chasing it. Anyway, I hope that's kind of been a useful video. Um, I will see you on the next one.